This has been an incredible generation for Resident Evil fans like myself. In the past five years, we've had the highly underrated Resident Evil Revelations 2, Resident Evil 7, a game that took the series back to its survival horror roots and delivered the scariest Resident Evil game to date, and the extraordinary Resident Evil 2 Remake, which was both a faithful recreation of one of the series' most beloved entries and one of the best horror games of the past decade. In fact, Resident Evil 2 Remake was my game of the year for 2019, and actually surpassed Resident Evil 4 to become my favourite game in the franchise. So naturally, Resident Evil 3 has been one of my most anticipated games since its announcement in a state of play last December. After finishing the game four times now, I can tell you it's a worthy remake of Resident Evil 3, and while Resident Evil 3 never quite hits the highs of its excellent predecessor, it's still a great game in its own right. Resident Evil 3 is noticeably more action-oriented than Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2. This can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on where you sit. On one hand, the more fast-paced nature of Resident Evil 3 means that the enemy encounters are often more exciting than the ones found in some of the other Resident Evil games. The gameplay also feels more fluid here than it did in 2. On the other hand, the more action-driven gameplay makes Resident Evil 3 significantly less scary than the last couple of Resident Evil games. Personally, I don't feel like the focus on action in Resident Evil 3 makes it any better or worse of a game. I think it simply makes it a very different experience than the last couple of games, and you should know that going in. Of course, it shouldn't come as a surprise that this remake is more heavy on action than the remake of Resident Evil 2 was. After all, when looking at the original PS1 versions of these games, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was always much more of an action game than Resident Evil 2 was. In Resident Evil 2, you were required to play through the game twice to see the full story, once as Leon and once as Claire. Resident Evil 3 instead only requires one playthrough to experience the full story, as instead of having separate campaigns for the two protagonists, Resident Evil 3 sees you alternating between playing as Resident Evil 1 protagonist Jill Valentine and Umbrella mercenary Carlos. Though this is undeniably Jill's story, and hence you spend more time playing as Jill than you do Carlos. In Resident Evil 3, Jill remains one of the best protagonists in the series, thanks to her cool demeanour and resolute attitude. Carlos is also a really likeable character, with a pretty interesting arc. Jill and Carlos have a good dynamic together and make a pretty compelling team. I really hope we'll see more of them working together again at some point in the future. The story in Resident Evil 3 occurs before, during and after Resident Evil 2. As a whole, the story is fairly straightforward and certainly not the highlight of the game, but there are still some interesting moments and fun connections to other games in the Resident Evil franchise that I won't spoil. Resident Evil 3, like many of the games in the series, is a little inconsistent in tone due to its often cheesy dialogue, but that's always been part of the charm of Resident Evil. You'll either find yourself embracing the schlocky nature of the franchise, or be put off by it. Personally, I've got a soft spot for the goofy side of Resident Evil. The downside to Resident Evil 3 only featuring one campaign route is that the game is significantly shorter than Resident Evil 2. My first playthrough was under 5 hours, and of course, once you know your way around the map and the solution to the puzzles, you'll be able to complete it much faster, with my most recent playthrough being about 1 hour and 40 minutes. The fact that Capcom chose to shorten some sections of the game and completely cut others in this remake also contributes to the game's short runtime. though it's worth adding that there are some locations added that weren't in the original game as well. To be honest, the relatively short runtime of the game didn't bother me. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, I found the pacing of the game excellent. There's no downtime in the game, with exciting set-piece moments occurring regularly. And secondly, Resident Evil 3 offers a ton of replay value. There are in-game challenges to complete, which give you points to unlock new perks, outfits, and weapons for the game. And there are multiple unlockable difficulty levels. Beating the game on Hardcore difficulty unlocks Nightmare difficulty, and beating the game on Nightmare unlocks Inferno difficulty. I highly recommend giving these higher difficulties a go, as they're some of the best examples of scaling difficulty in games. Enemies are a lot stronger on the higher difficulties, and the game isn't afraid to bombard you with way more of them when playing on Nightmare or Inferno. You'll also encounter stronger enemy types earlier on, and find that item locations have been shuffled around on the highest difficulties. This makes each new difficulty level a slightly different experience 
If you only knew about one element of the original Resident Evil 3, it was probably its titular villain Nemesis. This towering monstrosity is deployed by Umbrella to hunt down members of the police team Stars, of which Jill was a member. In Resident Evil 2, the primary antagonist, Mr. X, hunted Claire and Leon consistently while they were trying to complete other objectives. Nemesis in Resident Evil 3 works differently. He's not a persistent threat, and instead only appears during scripted sequences, where you're tasked with either escaping him or fighting him. Because of this, Nemesis never feels quite as menacing as Mr. X did, and as the game progresses, he started to feel like much less of a threat to me than he did earlier on. Something I really want to compliment Capcom on is the enemy design in Resident Evil 3. Nemesis himself looks amazing, and remains one of the most iconic villain designs in gaming, but there are some other really cool enemy designs in Resident Evil 3 as well. I particularly like the Hunters and the Paleheads. If you played Resident Evil 2 last year, you'll surely remember just how gorgeous it was, and Resident Evil 3 is just as impressive. The character models and environments are both great, and the game features some of the most stunning lighting effects I've ever seen in a game. It's safe to say, between these Resident Evil games and Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil Engine has proved to be one of the most remarkable engines in the industry. Resident Evil 3 controls quite similarly to Resident Evil 2, but there's one major addition to the mobility in the game, a dodge manoeuvre. This is a great inclusion that makes a lot of sense with the focus on action in Resident Evil 3. By tapping R1 when an enemy lunges at you, it's possible to dodge out of the way, which gives you time to make a counter attack. While playing as Carlos, the dodge is swapped for a counter punch, which knocks enemies back, leaving them vulnerable. It can be a little tricky to nail the timing of the dodge at first, but once you get it down, it's always gratifying to pull off. It's also absolutely essential to master the dodge if you want to succeed on higher difficulties. Prioritising action in Resident Evil 3 means that the game has less puzzles than many of the other games in the series. There are only a handful of them in Resident Evil 3, and they're all fairly easy. This isn't necessarily a bad thing though, as in the past I've found some of the puzzles in Resident Evil to feel like busy work. While Resident Evil 3 is highly polished in most regards, and always runs at a steady frame rate, I did notice one odd technical hiccup. Sometimes when enemies are in the distance, you'll notice them moving very choppily. These stuttering enemies are more than likely intentional to maintain the game's flawless performance, but in a game this beautiful, this sort of thing stands out even more. Like Resident Evil 2 before it, Resident Evil 3 was a game in desperate need of a remake, as the controls of many PS1 games just don't hold up today. I'm just glad Capcom have treated their classic Resident Evil games with this level of respect. Resident Evil 3 Remake is now the definitive version of Resident Evil 3 for me. It's also a worthy sequel to the Resident Evil 2 Remake and a damn good horror action experience. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more reviews, including my upcoming review of One Piece Pirate Warriors 4.